very good morning to you. This is Talk TV and it is Petrie here with you until four o'clock. It is Thursday, the 28th of uh, July. Um, and um, with me in the studio, I keep wanting to talk like this now or, or like this, because with me in the studio is an award winning dental surgeon, Dr. Neelish Palmer. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm oh, very well. How are you? <laughs> very well, thank you. <laughs> you don't need to cover I, the teeth. I, yeah, well, I just feel I feel I was right with you because mine are all right on the wonk. <laughs> so, um, for, from years of sucking my thumb as a child. Um, but I, the, the reason we wanted to talk to you today, I mean, I know that you do, you're a, you're a sur dental surgeon, so you will deal with some really pretty awful cases. But there's been a lot in the press recently about these so called turkey teeth. Now, when I first read that, I thought, well, turkeys don't have teeth. So what are they talking about? But this is actually from people who go to a country like Turkey for cheap dentistry. And that must wind you up when you hear of people doing that. Because presumably, cheap dentistry can mean disastrous dentistry. Very much so. Um, so we've seen patients who've gone away had quick fix cosmetic treatment done in many many places abroad and sometimes the end results are less than ideal um, and i think it's a combination of it's cheap um, they actually sell it directly to uk citizens so you can get a hotel you get a uh, flight you get transfers you get food and it's almost like a mini holiday but also get your teeth done at the same mm. time um, but there's no accountability so if you had treatment done in the uk and you weren't happy with the result you can go back and see the dentist and there's lots of avenues to get compensation or make complaints but if the dentist is two thousand miles away how do you complain where do you go and if you're here in the uk and you have a problem it's not very easy to jump on a plane and go back to turkey and have your teeth fixed so but but also the, the thing is though is that not the problem with the cost and the price of dentistry here because if it was cheaper, if it was more affordable, people wouldn't feel the need to go to countries like Turkey and have their teeth done. Yeah, I mean, if you look at private treatment in the UK compared to private treatment in the USA, Canada, Israel, we're actually fairly cheap by comparison. Um, the whole issue also stems from the lack of NHS dentists. It's very hard to get through to an NHS dentist in this country. And we've just lost manpower. We've had so many dentists retire post-COVID. Mm. We've had so many dentists leave to go to Australia, to go to Canada, to work. And the dentists who do qualify, or the younger dentists that I talk to, they're not interested in working in the health service anymore. They all want to work in private dentistry. So we're losing our cohort of British dentists. Um, but saying British dentists, a lot of the NHS dentists... It's a rarity is pushing the price yeah. up as well. Exactly, yeah, yeah. We are booked for months and months and months in advance. Really? Some dentists, a very good friend of mine, a private dentist, is now taking bookings a year in advance <gasps> to do treatments. And that's... Invisalign cosmetic treatments, not basic treatments. Not basic um, treatments. No. And that's the other thing, isn't it? That, that uh, you know, the British have always been thought of as been having very bad teeth. In fact, our teeth are much healthier than Americans' teeth. Yeah. But uh, they always look at us because they're crooked or whatever and say, yeah. oh, the Brits have terrible teeth. Um, and so that has always been the, the, the trope that we've had to deal with. But now, of course, people, everybody wants this... Um, Essex smile correct um, and and as fake as that looks yeah. um, so th this that's really changed people's dentures people can, didn't used to give a damn about their teeth did no. they? and you know my personal opinion is what changed was the camera phone I mean, mm. so many years ago, how often did you see a picture of yourself? Yeah. Whereas now, True. you're taking pictures of yourself almost every single day. Um, and you, what's the first thing you see? You see your teeth. So that's really up the rise of cosmetic dentistry in the UK. And now, I think as a whole, cosmetically, the standards of cosmetic dentistry are amazing. Um, and we are bucking the trend. But there are certain things, like you mentioned, getting teeth done abroad, which is beginning to seep in through mainstream dentistry and causing an issue, especially fixing the problems that oh my patients God, it must get. Be, it must be absolutely hideous. Uh, because it, the, the thing is, though, when you go uh, to the dentist and you say, right, I want... I don't know if people have top and bottom done. I think they probably do. But, you know, I just want my top teeth yeah. all straight, white. They'll probably need to be crowned or capped or whatever. Um, what what would that cost? 
That's a good question. About 20, it, is it 10 grand? 20 so grand? if you if you were going for veneering teeth, um, that's just a thin bit. That's a thin bit on the front, bit on the front yeah. as opposed to crowning the whole tooth. Then you may be looking anything between 800 to 1,000 pounds. Per, per tooth, tooth. Per tooth. Um, we try and be not as invasive nowadays so we try and align the teeth so get the teeth aligned so they're not crooked and then whiten the teeth and then maybe do something called composite bonding or edge bonding to the teeth which is less destructive especially if you're someone in the 20s or early 30s you don't really want to grind the teeth down into small pegs because you know that in 10 years time those teeth may have problems and you may end up losing teeth mm. and that's when you have implants and work like that done and then you are talking or some bridges big numbers. or things like correct that. yeah yeah um, but they they are expensive there's 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 no doubt about it I mean, a bridge uh, if you have it done privately I think it's about two thousand pounds yeah and that's you know I've got one at the back of my mouth mm -hmm. it's at the back of my mouth and it's two thousand pounds it's mm -hmm. just like well you know, I mean, I wanted it because it affected my smile, mm. but, um, you know, I've got another one that I haven't bothered doing. So it, it's it, a lot of people just can't afford that. Yeah. There's yeah. no way they can afford I mean, even if that were to be done on the NHS and they probably wouldn't do it unless for very specific reasons, mm -hmm. um, that's still a lot of money. Let me reframe it. So let's say that bridge lasts for 10 years. We yeah. give everything good 10 year life expectancy. What else could you buy for two thousand pounds that would last, that would work for ten years, have very little maintenance, and that you use it every single day, in a fairly hostile environment because we mm. have food, we have drinks, we have acid, we have reflux, all sorts of things. So when you break it down in that perspective, two thousand pounds for a bridge isn't too bad. Mm. But when you look at the training, the skill set, the equipment, all the red tape that dentists have to go through, that's why the price seems to be going up and up and up. Mm. Um, and dentistry now is the most, dentistry in the UK is one of the most litigious areas of healthcare in the world. De British dentists get sued more than American dentists. Israeli dentists, we were top of the pile in the why? UK. Why? Sued for what? Um, for patients not being happy with the work, patients not being happy with the way the treatment was administered, not being happy with the outcome. Um, we have a very litigious nature in the UK and it's been cultivated by mm. no win, no fee mm. lawyers. Um, so our indemnity, so our insurance is sky high to work as a dentist. So uh, talk to me about <clears throat> some of the disasters that you've seen. Mm -hmm. Have we got a photograph of turkey teeth? Um, just so that people know that what we're talking about. Let's see if we can get a no, the filed down ones. Yeah, that's right. <coughs> so this is when somebody will go to a foreign country. There we go. And they file down the natural tooth mm. so that you can put a crown on. Correct. Right. Yes. And people are coming back from places like Turkey mm -hmm. where the crowns have fallen off mm -hmm. or they're so painful they've got to be taken off. Yeah. And they're left with what are known as turkey teeth, those. Correct, yeah. So... If you look at this, on the picture on the left... Can we left, have that back up, please, guys? You can see where the gums are bleeding. Yes. Um, and you can see what's quite angry. But they get this work done within a week. We'd normally allow that to settle for almost a month before we even considered putting crowns on those teeth. But if you rewind it, why have these teeth been ground, ground yeah. down so I mean, much? it looks like a young person. Yeah, and you'd never get that enamel back. Once it's gone, it's gone for life. Yeah. And you've shortened the life expectancy of those teeth. We would rather align the teeth and then whiten them and bond to them, and you'll get a similar look. Or align the teeth and then put thin veneers on top so you're not grinding the teeth down into stumps. Those teeth will all need root canal treatment at some oh. point. And once you do root canal treatment on the tooth, 10 years, 15 years, the tooth may fail. And that's when you would see someone like me to have dental implants done. So all of these patients, at I mean, some the point, dental implant as well would would depend on whether you had enough bone, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah, and yeah. that's a much longer, more complicated and costly procedure. Yeah, yes. yeah. I mean, that that to me is is really shocking. That that a, a dentist, it's it's almost like those um, cosmetic surgeons that do surgery on young women who don't really need it. Exactly. That that actually that is that is terrible yeah. that that is an awful thing to do to somebody who's young yeah and it's it's scary how often it's being done and how it's being pushed in social media you've got a lot of influencers who go out and have this work done mm. and i've always said you have good dentists abroad you have bad dentists in the uk everything is variable but you have to do your research you have to know what the repercussions of having this work is in the long term 
And the other question is, when that work goes wrong, who pays to fix it? Should the NHS pay to fix this work that was done that abroad? That was done abroad, yeah. yeah. So it becomes a bit of a dilemma. It, it, that job there that we were just looking at, that, mm. uh, forgive me if, you, if you're on radio, because I know many of you are, but basically, if you can just imagine quite healthy white teeth filed to spikes, thin spikes, um, all through the mouth, top and bottom. So that was the image that we were looking at, of somebody young. Um, and then they would put individual crowns Correct. on those, on top, so fake yeah. teeth on top, basically. Correct. Yeah. How much would a job like that cost in the UK? Um, if you found a dentist who, the, who would do, do that sort of yeah. aggressive work, um, I would say you're looking at at least a thousand pounds per tooth, probably. Right. So you're probably looking at what thirty grand? Yeah. Right. So that's thirty thousand um, pounds. What would that cost in Turkey? I think they've been doing it for closer to five thousand pounds. Wow! Yeah, yeah, including hotels and cetera, holidays. Cetera. And yeah, yeah, give or take. I'm, I might stand corrected on that, but I think that's where we're, where we're at. Well, it's easy to see, isn't it? Why somebody would say, "Look, I want that Essex smile, that Towie smile." Um, five grand and a holiday, or thirty grand yeah. and no holiday. Yeah. And it's and, easy to see why somebody would choose to go abroad. Yeah. And I'd reframe it and say, right, you need heart surgery done. It's thirty thousand pounds in the UK, or you can go to India and get it done for three grand. Mm. What would you choose? Um, and but that's life saving. This is just life changing. Yeah, but the this, teeth. This could be. This could ruin someone's life. Oh as yeah, well. there's there's a story in the paper last week. You must have seen about the woman who went to have her teeth done, and she's had a, a screaming headache. For, for years or months or whatever, and can't get rid of it. Um, and that's because some nerve damage that they've created yeah. whilst filing down the teeth. Right. And I understand that, I get it. I wouldn't want to go to, I'd rather have one tooth done mm. well mm. Um, uh, and and have them done one at a time yeah. um, than, than do that. But um, I can understand why young people on the dating scene, if they've got friends who've got these big white, you know, fake teeth, that they might want to do the same thing and they can afford to do it cheaply and they're thinking well it's not a heart operation mm. it's just my teeth yeah. yeah but then they come back and expect you to fix it correct yeah. and how much more does it cost to fix and how long does it take say somebody like that who came back with with nerve damage so, or... so you know when you have so many teeth that are prepared it becomes an exceptionally complicated case so you end up only going to the top 5% of dentists who may have the know-how or the skill set to take that. Right. Your average dentist um, wouldn't want to take that risk on. Plus the indemnity or the insurance we have to have to take on these cases is a higher level. And you're in that top 5%? Um, I do fix those sort of cases, yeah. yeah. And now I've got to the stage where a lot of cases are refused because I'm so busy with normal work, which wow. is quite nice and straightforward with happy patients who like coming to see me. Whereas when you have a, people like going to I've the dentist, I've got some who love coming to see me. <laughs> I promise. I don't believe it. But when you have a patient who's had this sort of work done, they're already quite distressed, and because often you'd have to take those crowns off and leave somebody with those stumps in order to repair the gums. Um, and no, you would always make them temporary, so you wouldn't let them run around without right. without that. But um, it's a lot of work, and it's quite tiring to do. And how do you cost it? Because you're taking on once you touch those teeth. You're sort of liable for them so your indemnity goes up so your costing for that goes up and also you need to be of the mindset to do it it's quite draining to treat mm. these cases for dentists so we do do them i tend to get more of the surgical ones where they've had dental implants done abroad and that's when a metal pole is drilled that, into the that's when a titanium bone. screw is put into the jaw yeah. and um i've seen some really um interesting somewhat scary cases where they've gone through nerves they've gone <gasps> into sinuses i had one lady who i was totally flabbergasted who had what I could only call is a Black & Decker nail put in there and a lump of plastic shoved on the top. Um, and that was done abroad while she was on holiday. Um, and that was quite shocking, actually. It was, it was interesting for me to try wow. and fix it, uh, which we did manage to fix. But it just goes to show that there's no oversight um, in some of these cases. But as I'd always say, you have great dentists abroad, and you have bad dentists abroad and it's just knowing to go to the right people and and that titanium post a friend of mine had that done i think it was a couple of grand yeah. for one two yeah. three grand three well. grand yeah, that would be grand. it and it failed mm -hmm. so even then it's not a guarantee that you can fix it correct yeah yeah 
and failure rates depending upon the individual usually once it's been placed between five to ten percent right i would say sometimes better sometimes worse but it depends upon the individual um, but for my patients if i put an implant in and it fails in the first two years we'd refund the money or we'd redo it again right yeah. and, and in what cases can you not do things like that heavy smokers right big smokers yeah. more than 10 a day uncontrolled diabetes, um, people who've had chemotherapy, radiotherapy, yeah. those cases can be tricky, um, but periodontal disease and smokers are my main no-nos. Right. Um, so patient, even this week, wanted to have lots of work done. I said, we can work together on this. I can give you your smile back, but you need to stop the 20 a day. You make a choice. Do you yeah. want to smoke or you want teeth? It's one or the other. Right. If you smoke, you're going to have dentures. Yeah. Right. Or if you quit smoking, I'll give you nice teeth. It's either or. You can't do it so that you smoke a little bit and get away with it. So I'm quite blunt with that yeah. now. And you know, most of the time they'll quit, but they may quit for the treatment, yeah. but I can't follow them around later on and say, oh, you're smoking yeah. now, I'm yeah. taking those teeth away. Yeah. So you have to sign and do a lot of due diligence before yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and ha you have, what, what sort of cases have you seen that you haven't been able to fix? Um, so far, none. Um, I think the main barrier to entry is cost. Mm. That's the main issue, is cost. Um, but usually we can fix most things, but you know, costing goes sky high. If it's a whole mouth of implants and it takes me a year to fix, then the costing goes sky high. Probably that, three times what we'd normally charge. So about a hundred grand? About a hundred grand, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And how, how do people fund that? I mean, crikey, they, that's a house in a, some parts. A lot country. of the time they don't. Um, sometimes we try and help them refer them to NHS teaching centres, hospitals, but even they don't have the capacity to treat those cases because they're that complicated. Um, how they fund it, I, I don't know. But the main the main message is don't get it done in the first place. Yeah, don't don't need it fixing in the first don't need place. It so if you, I know you had some building work done. Recently, yeah. I think. Well, it's not done yet. It's still I, not done. No, I'm paying for it. I've paid for it though, obviously. So, so if, if you're having building work done, say so you're building a house and the builders don't build the house properly, the yeah. foundations are bad, you've got damp, etc. You have to demolish the house and redo it from scratch. So yeah. the cost of that is a lot higher. So that's kind of where we are. Um, and these cases are very, very tricky. And sometimes we do decide whether or not we want to take them on. You talk, and there's more and more people coming back. Yeah, there's more and more people. And the, the more sort of well-known you become in the dental world to deal with these cases, mm. the more dentists will say, I know, let's send that case to Nilesh. He's good at those. Let's send it to him. Whereas, you know, after a while, you, you just want a simple life. You yeah. want to do nice cases. Couple where, of fillings. Couple of fillings, an implant, <laughs> one veneer, go home, watch TV, and I'm happy. But this, this stuff is or a bit Or go great. racing, because you're a racing or driver, Or go racing, well. yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, you love to race cars. I love to race cars, yeah. yeah. Um, I think if I didn't become a dentist, I would have tried to become a professional racing car. Well, you must be loaded anyway as a dentist. Um, I think we do okay. Yeah. We do okay. I mean, motor racing isn't cheap. But, no, I was um, going to say. But I'm lucky. I've, I've got some sponsors who help me. So, um, is it a toothpaste? Uh, no, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a few financial institutions, but All it's very right, much okay. dental related, though. I have an implant company that sponsors me. Ah, well, yeah. Well, and a go. drill manufacturer. Of course. Yeah. So it's I all, love drills. It's all intertwined. Uh, I'm a big DIYer. Um, so I do my own teeth. Give it a go. If no. it goes wrong, give me a call. Yeah, <laughs> I think I'll, I think I'll give you a call first, <laughs> no and worries. then uh, and then then we won't bother with me doing that myself. No worries. Uh, uh, Neilish, it's been a real pleasure uh, meeting you, and um, let's speak again soon. But don't just don't go to Turkey to have your teeth done unless you know for certain that it's a brilliant dentist. That's your advice. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank I'll you very much. I'll be making an appointment. You'll see me in a year. Fantastic. Was it? The, you said it's a waiting list now. Yeah. Yeah. No. Can we'll, I not jump? We'll make an exception for you. Uh, what a guy. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> Dr. Nilesh uh, Palmer, thank you so much for joining us. My I've pleasure. really, really enjoyed it. It's been My fascinating. My pleasure. Um, stay with us here on Talk TV. We're over to you next.